Okay, this is Joe, K7JOE, and I'm working on my 160 meter antenna out here in the woods. So I just thought I'd do a quick update, show you what's going on with it. Let's see if we can flip the camera around and uh, give it a try. Okay, here's the uh, coil. Basically, it's a, uh, a mobile mirror mount, and I've got my ground radials, elevated ground radials, four of them, going off way out in the woods. Then I've got a, uh, a copper coil here that I made out of ice maker coil. And I don't know, it's about six, six and a half micro Henry's. Not exact. It's just, uh, it's not supported right now. I need to uh, maybe get some popsicle sticks with some epoxy and I'll epoxy it up. But right now I just wanted to test it, see if electrically it was close, which it seems to be. I made three clips here, three tap points, uh, one, two, and three. Each of these are made out of uh, copper, just uh, some old, copper weather stripping that I cut down and then uh, sweat soldered onto the uh, onto the copper coil and then the uh, the top part here right now is just a, a solder joint uh, at the top of the coil which goes up over to the tree just for uh, a little bit of a horizontal and then it goes up 90 feet to the very top of the tree and then it goes over uh, in an L configuration uh, it's resonant without any kind of a uh, tap on the coil at 1820 and I guess this is around 1850, uh, 1880 for AM, and then uh, 19 something or other. I just put these on here based on another little coil that I was using. I haven't tested them yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside and uh, test uh, with this first tap point um, and the second tap point. Try to get on uh, at least 1880 AM. So we'll give that a try. We'll be back. Oh, and again, uh, there's no grounding. Uh, that center or that uh, upper radiator is... Uh, it's straight up. There's no uh, DC ground, no ground rod, nothing like that. It's just uh, four radials that are elevated 10 feet off the ground. Uh, maybe eventually I'll, uh, I'll put a, DC, uh, a ground rod in and put a little transit trap in there, try to get rid of uh, static. But the reality is the difference between the shield and ground here is so small that a spark could uh, arc across that real easily. And of course, the coax where it enters the shack is grounded. So if uh, there was a lot of static discharge on there, what you'd get is you'd get a jump across this gap here which is not a very big gap. That's what, maybe uh, a millimeter or two, and it would jump to uh, to ground, which is this, and then, uh, of course, uh, down. So anyway, I'm uh, just playing here. Going to try to put uh, five, 600 watts through this is all. It should be no problem. All right, that's it, K7JOE. Back in a bit with some results. Okay, Joe, we're back in the ham shack now. We're just going to do a quick test. So we are on uh, 1825, center of the CW band. That's my noise level, about S3. Jump it around, kind of noisy. Nothing you can do about it, really, though. All right, we're going to take a look here. Just put four or 500 watts through it, see what the standing wave is. That's 400 watts. That needle barely moves. 1.1 to 1. On my amplifier, same deal. It says 300 watts, but the meter is scotch. Pretty much flat. And that is the resonant point in the bandwidth here. You know, you can go 20 kilohertz either side of 30 or of 1825. So you go down to 1805 or up to 1845 without really retuning or messing with it. 1845. 1.3 to 1. 1805. Even less, of course, on that meter. That meter is a little bit inaccurate. Anyway, I think uh, mission accomplished here. We've replaced the uh, old bug catcher coil, which uh, this is what I was using previously, an old bug catcher coil. And I was just using a very small amount of inductance. As you can see here, about seven or eight turns. I've replaced that now with the copper coil.